Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I watched both of these films. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Terrifier, which released in 2016. Written and directed by Damien Leone. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis for the first Terrifier? Well, the story follows Tara and Dawn, who are heading home after a night out on the town on Halloween night. They have caught the attention of an evil-looking clown, Art the Clown, and he has every intention of capturing them, torturing them, and killing them. What will be left, and will we be happy when we see it? Thanks. So Art has been struggling, really, to uh, to find his place right. in, in the horror genre yeah. for, for a little while until <laughs> the breakout success of Terrifier, because it's not his first on-screen appearance. Yeah. This goes back, actually, all the way back to 2008 with this director, Damien Leone's first uh, short film mm. called The Ninth Circle, which had Art the Clown uh, in... You know, as we know him today, uh, amongst a myriad of other kinds of creatures and demons and monsters, a very uh, experimental piece. The director said he was throwing everything he had in his arsenal at the wall to yeah. see what stuck. Yeah. Art the Clown was the thing that stuck. And then he ended up making uh, a short film based on Art the Clown in 2011, which got the interest in a couple of producers in the studio that then utilized Art the Clown in the movie All Hallows Eve. Yeah. From the back of that, the interest in this art character started to grow until we eventually got Terrifier. And now off the back of the success of Terrifier, we also have Terrifier 2. And the director has also said that it's looking like a third movie is very likely and would likely be the third and final film as well, making this a nice trilogy in the end. <laughs> I've heard that fucking shit before. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I did not have any interest in watching any of these films. Um, I'd seen the Art the Clown kind of image, I think, for All Hallows' Eve. Um, got the idea of obviously seeing the horror anthology, but never got around to watching it. Um, and then Terrifier came out uh, in 2016, and I think it had a, a bit of an audience. I think a lot of people were talking about it on the internet. I do certainly remember around 2016 was the time all those fucking idiots were walking around dressed as fucking clowns. Exactly. And so, thinking and jumping out in the dark and shit. So whether that elevated this film or put you off wanting to watch it because of the circus that was roaming around? Yeah, it was a kind of hand-in-hand -hand marriage. And I, I'm not going to lie, certain horror movies do have a certain social impact sometimes and Terrifier, I think has had that impact, especially with, you know, at, at the time of recording this, last year's Terrifier 2 was a bit of a breakout success to some people. To others, we were like, what? Yes. Um, and I still looked at Terrifier and Terrifier 2, and I was like, you know what? I'm good. Like, there's, there's something about these films that tells me I will watch them at some point, but nothing that says you need to watch it now. It's one of the greatest fucking things ever. I'll be honest as well, and I saw the image for Art the Clown, and I went, hmm, no yeah, thank you. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm far better than this movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'm not far better than that movie type of movie. I just... An evil-looking clown doesn't shout Oscar-winning no, script doesn't. writing no, to me. Doesn't. And I was already like, look, and I've already had, like, I've got my Pennywise. You yes. know, I'm done. I've got my killer clowns from outer space. Yeah. Like, I don't need another clown character doing stuff. So even though the image on its own was striking, I had no idea how wonderful the actor in that makeup was in movement. In a still image, you can get the essence of what he's portraying, but in full movement and in context of the film... It's really wonderful. Now, I want to go to the opening of this film because I thought it was really quite striking. Sorry, not the actual opening. Yeah. Because the, for the opening, we have Art putting on the makeup. Oh, yeah, yeah, While yeah. we have this TV set playing this broadcast about this survivor from a horrific incident over a year ago. Yeah. Talk, talking about her ordeal, which angers this this clown who smashes the TV continues to get ready. And we follow these two drunken girls for a little bit. Yeah. But our actual real introduction to Art... 
is really, uh, I thought, it's really simplistic, but a very effective filmmaking, captured very well, lit very well, where we see Art in the distance approaching. We hear, because Art doesn't speak a word throughout the film, he did, he sound don't. effects, uh, whether they're diegetic or non-diegetic, they really work. The wind howling, the heavy boots hit crunching the leaves underneath, the tightening of his leather gloves over the bag that he's carrying is of his toys. Yeah. Uh, it just really works, especially as he then stops, notices them, and then once they get a bit confused with him, he's vanished. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I okay, I'll go with that. Like you said, the, the whole introduction of him being on the street is really good. But as you've already stated as well, this is not really the intro of the movie. We've already had a, a thing where, uh, like we said, the sole survivor of this massacre is being interviewed on TV. And I'm looking at her face and I'm going, plastic much? You know, I can, you know, maybe it's me, maybe it's being picky. I, I did want to point out though, like me looking at the special effects throughout this whole movie and the sequel as well, made me also kind of stick with the idea that yes, CGI would not have worked in this movie and in certain movies, it's better for them to, to use practical effects even though it does look really, really fake. And you can tell by this girl's face, you know, while she's being interviewed, about her surviving this thing. And like we said, Art the Clown then kicks the TV and you're like, oh, what's that all about? And then we watch this host for like five to ten minutes talking on the phone to somebody and she's really bad mouthing the girl that she's just interviewed. Oh, she was absolutely horrible looking. Oh, she scared me. She was going to terrify me and all this kind of stuff. And then she gets murdered. We haven't really even seen Art the Clown, the main fucking character of Terrifier yet. But this host, the TV host, is being murdered by Plastic Face Girl. <laughs> and it's a bloody pulp mess with an eyeball hanging out. <laughs> it really is one of those scenes where you're like, I don't know whether to laugh or throw up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, this is it. But like I said, like the the, the, the sole survivor is laughing, like ha and I'm like, what's this got to do with Terrifier Art the Clown? Like, what? Well, first off, why didn't they call the movie just Art the Clown instead of Terrifier? Because he is the Terrifier. Is he? Because in the sequel, he's a, it's a ride. Well, yeah. <laughs> 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 and then, like I said, we 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 will go over the title. We'll see Art carrying his bag. He'll he'll see uh, Tara Hayes, played by Jenna Kennell, and Catherine Kokoran playing Dawn. And they're two drunk girls who've just finished a Halloween party and they're wanting to go home. And Tara sees Art and he sees her. And yeah, okay, I will agree to a certain extent. His imagery of him standing there with that grin and the eyes. I mean, it's all in the eyes. It is, yeah. Really. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just all of his posing. Um, works really well, though I do think that the movie utilises it way too much throughout the movie. It's just shot after shot after shot of him, and I'm like, for fuck's sake, mate, just... No, I don't think it is. I think, I think, I think the editing and the selective uses of Art's reactions and poses are, are perfectly timed throughout the runtime. It's only an hour and 24 minutes, including both credits uh, yeah. but it, it's the sequence where they've, they've decided not to drink drive they're going to go and get some food they go into the pizza place and Art follows them in and again it's the way that he's walking towards his table without looking where he's going just eyeballing Tara as he's making his way to his table and he continues to stare at her yeah and you're just like is this a man? Yeah. is this a demon? I but okay but here's a, I, and I said this to you before we turned the camera on it's movie this is it's all movie logic like normal logic goes completely out the window they've already seen this creepy looking clown ass motherfucker it's halloween night you know oh don't give me that he is evil looking like, he's evil looking motherfucker he ain't a happy looking isn't clown. the aim on halloween night to be the most evil looking thing you can be <laughs> not not for these girls they're just they're just dressed up in normal outfits and and that's the thing as well this movie also doesn't really establish like the town that they're in or the city that they're in. It's literally yeah. dotted locations. So you are just 
bimbling along from location to location with the characters. And so when he walks in here, like the pizza, the pizza guys look at him. He's staring at the girls, okay? You walk into a fucking pizza place and stare at a woman and see how long it takes till somebody says, motherfucker, get the fuck out. Well, because nobody says it to, to, to Art. He, no, the manager does. He ends up kicking him out eventually. After he's wiped shit all over the toilet. Don't you fucking give me that shit. Art fucking walks to the back and in fairness you, you don't even really see it until art's gone and when you do see it you go that's fake shit that's, that's, that's fake it's a shit. movie it's all fake <laughs> yeah but, but it's it's the way that the movie is just kind of wanting to move these things on like the the, the manager of the pizza place has no problem with art until art causes a problem true you know but th this scene really is just building the escalating tension between yeah. because we know we know art's the bloody serial killer yeah. we know as the audience but the girls don't yeah and they're, they're half drunk okay and so the other girl ends up going over there and sitting in his lap and <laughs> poking his nose playing with his hat Taking Seeing selfies selfie. with him yeah. and wandering back like, he's harmless, he's just a dude, he's, he's just having a laugh. It's creepy, but he's funny. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and she, she makes that passing line where she says, what do you think he's going to do to me? Hack me into tiny pieces or something? <laughs> yeah, like, it's just like, oh, that's great. Like, <laughs> it's like, oh, we know where this is going. And you're like, he's going to eat you in a minute, love. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's it, because they wander back out to the car and the tire's... Flat. They don't know if it's been slashed, or punctured, or whatever. That was pretty cool, actually, because Tara had called her sister, Vicky, and, and asked her to come down and pick them up. And, once again, movie logic, she doesn't ask where they are, or if there's any safe place for them to go. She, she or anything. does. Where are you? And, and the girls are sat in the car, and while they're sat in the car, we're cutting back to the pizza place, and the guy's cleaning shit off the toilet. He's complaining about it to his manager. Um, and it keeps coming back to the girls and they're talking about how Art's disappeared and we're probably never going to see him again. And you keep cutting back and you, you as, a, as a horror uh, experience viewer, you're like, yeah, I can see where that's going. Now, was that CGI fire in the decapitated head on the desk or is that real shitty looking fire? Um, I, <laughs> it looked bad. I think it was prosthetic. <laughs> now... The there there, there is one thing that is massively CGI, which is very hard to catch, yeah. and that is the jack-o'-lantern that sat on the side. It oh. was completely CGI, and that was because the director when editing it was just like, it's Halloween night, we need to Halloween it up a little bit. Yeah. It's got CGI jack-o'-lantern uh, in here. Cool. But yeah, yeah, perfectly fit, it's fine. I mean, Art jumps out at the other uh, pizza guy. Um, cuts his fingers off. Cuts his fingers off, kind of. And at this, this is the point when I was looking at the gore, and I'm like excessive over the top needed not really it's something that the movie needed to make it stand out to all the other crappy slasher movies that are out there because we're always sick and tired of people being killed off screen exactly and never this it. is this is and this we're is, always sick and tired this is the thing what i want CGI to rejoice blood. and celebrate because you know the like through the the slasher like golden era yeah like film censorship and everything else just reduce those kills to quick flashes or deaths off screen where we're now at an age yeah. where those sensor gates are so relaxed now that filmmakers can push the envelope and the boundaries and show right. what but, filmmakers wanted to show for 40 years but, in this genre but my issue with that is is that in my 40 years of watching horror movies i didn't i didn't need the gore and over the top kills to establish characters yes. and franchises didn't need it, but wanted it <laughs> didn't need it wanted it but when i got it didn't want it Oh, because, I just found it hilarious. <laughs> right, but, but that's why I didn't want it, because the blood was fake. The body parts were over the top. The gore... And and I and I started to look at Terror... While well, I was watching Terrifier 1, and I had build, built myself up for this, people, to watch Terrifier 1 and 2, to compare them both, and then obviously do the research, make the notes, talk about it in a review, and compare them to other horror movies I've seen in the franchise, because this is what people are doing to me at the moment. They're like, oh my God, Terrifier 1 and 2, like, they're bigger than Evil Dead 1 and 2, they're bigger than Child's Play and Candyman, and then you watch them and you go where what's the entertainment value in this we've got this character who has no backstory because we can't we can't connect it to the previous in, uh, installments we've seen because he's got no connection he's literally just this clown killing these two guys and now he's come across he's, he's coming back for these two girls and so one of the girls tara realizes that she needs to go for a pee and so she runs into the 
first building that she sees with a guy who's exterminate. He's you know he's an exterminator, and the place is full of rats. And he takes her down to this shitty little toilet, and he's just like, "There you go, you can go here." And I'm like, "Oh wow, you really had no location to work with, did you?" So you just concocted this story of this exterminator working in this house so you've got somewhere for art to go and dawn is left in the car waiting for the girl and immediately i mean it's not even been 10 minutes since the murder of the two people at the pizza parlor but immediately somebody has not only seen art and given the full description to the police but the police are at the crime scene now and they are looking for art the clown from what I can establish, is only around the fucking corner from the pizza place. But we've got no establishment. That's why. That's why I'm saying the film is is good, but it 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 really trips over some massive speed bumps of of, of just let's get art to the next shot. Let's get more gore, and I'm like, but what for? For more violent, brutal, unpredictable killings. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you're never gonna believe what I just heard on the radio. But the, if that's the entertainment that we are taking from this film, then I don't see much of the entertainment from this film because removing of the blood and the gore, you've got really not much. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. Like, art makes up, in all, probably about 15% of the whole film. The brutal killings probably make up about 15% as well, yeah. which means you're left with the rest with just mindless, tropey, hiding, wandering, creeping, Ca is he there, is he there, the building, mundane yeah. character, all that all rubbish. That. But the thing is, <laughs> is that small 25% of the killings in Art the Clown is so good. <laughs> it's so good. You forget how crap the rest of the stuff is and you don't see them as characters. They're disposable. Everybody in this film's gonna die. It doesn't matter. It's, you just it's just how hard did you laugh at what they put on screen. But it, And that is the entertainment value for this. For me I started to, you know, compare this to Texas Chainsaw Massacre as the original story and, and I really feel like they missed out on giving him our a backstory of why he's doing this. What what is it other than he's just a homicidal clown? He's just evil. He's but, just an evil. But, but, but no, no, no. <laughs> but the thing is, Michael Myers was just evil. Yeah. And he just stabbed people with large knives. He didn't have to... Well, they tried to do it in fucking Halloween Kills with him multiply stabbing somebody in the back. And, it, and we didn't enjoy it. He stuck a boy up against the wall and it was such an iconic shot. With Art, he kidnaps Dawn and then he ends up catching up with Tara and it is a really cool shot I will give you that when she comes up from the toilet and she she walks around the corner and he stood there like with a big grin on his face and you're like oh fuck he does the gotcha and yeah she, the panic and she chases off and you know and that's really the kind of cool you know like we said the standard slasher tick the boxes of chasing the young girl around the abandoned building she can't get out the front door because he's fucking padlocked well the place the is being door. uh bombed because of the extermination gas yeah but the used, exterminator so. didn't didn't lock up because he would have gone to let her back out again the exterminator has gone back to work with his music in and arts set this place up he's he's now taken over because that's what i established from this film when art walks into a place he's now jason He's now Candyman. He's controlling the place. He's going to kill everybody in yeah. this place. And he ends up capturing Tara and injecting her with something, knocking her out and taking her down into his little place in the basement and tying her to a chair. Now, I just want to say as well, now this video is probably, because of YouTube, going to get age-gated and certified mainly, mainly because oh, yeah. of this sequence. Yeah. So uh, for those of you that like horror movies, but mm -hmm. like squeamish, mm -hmm. you, you, warning, yeah, warning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a really brutal torture sequence. And it's also hilarious. It's not really torture, mate. It's straight well, up no, murder. It, it, it's torture in the fact that, um, you know, Tara is strapped to this chair and Art is going through yeah. all of his tools. That's, that's true. He it, picks up the hammer and he Tara. imitates yeah. smacking her several times. And yeah. her screams... They they feel so authentic. I was like, she is really selling this 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 fear that she's about to get bludgeoned to death. And yeah, I yeah. eventually pulls up the saw, and of course Tara is frantically struggling with her bonds, screaming. And Art's just like, yeah, this is not for you actually. And he goes over, and he's just like, he's really proud. He's like, I've got this thing. Yeah, I'm gonna unveil for you. Yeah, and he strips back the curtain, 
and there's Dawn hanging upside down in nothing but her pants. Now, people have talked about this horrible scene in Terrifier 1 when they had been talking Terrifier 2 to me and they were like, oh my god, there's a sequence in the first one that makes the second one just look like a fucking puppy box, you know, it's, oh my god, it's so fucking... And I was like, I gotta, I gotta know what it is. And so I watched the sequence before I even watched the film and was like, really? Like, you had to go with that? Like we, like I said, we can only show so much. So I will talk in detail about what's going on. And he decides to hacksaw Dawn from the crotch down all the way, all the way down, literally. I mean, on one hand, it's an amazing prosthetic effect. It's oh, really an amazing is. sequence to watch. On the other hand, it's completely ludicrous. It's completely stupid. <laughs> yes. he, he, his arm would get tired like what? halfway through. He's clearly the blade not human. Is, <laughs> the, the blade would, the no, blade would not it. even ever make that kind of thing. <laughs> it's completely implausible. And, and, and the thing that gets me, and, and, and like I said, this is going back to 2011, the thing argument about practical effects versus CGI and how they work. That is a whole practical effect girl you can tell hmm. with today's technology with the dvd advancements and the things that we watch you can tell the difference between real gore fake gore rubber skin fake skin you know and all that kind of stuff and so as i'm watching him saw all the way down kind of just laughing his <laughs> ass off, ah! i'm like this is so fucking stupid yes. so so the horror aspect is completely yes lost. it is lost L it's yeah. lost on me it's it's left it's and stomach turning it's gone for the shock in all value yeah. instead of trying to scare no, you now see brain dead was stomach churning that whole final sequence yeah. with the lawnmower that's really good practical effects yes. of gore yeah. this is farcical and stupid because in my mind the director went we need we need a cherry on top of this film to make people remember us what do we go with hey let's saw a girl in half with a hacksaw while she's naked damn yeah damn <laughs> damn and well of course Tara reacts so you may imagine how you would when you watch a friend get sawed in half in probably bruh she escapes <laughs> she manages she escapes. to escape <laughs> He walks from one end, from the room to the other, and by the time he gets there, she's escaped! Yeah. And she manages to smack him once, and I'm like, oh, he's vulnerable. Yeah. Does he bleed? Yeah. Can we kill him? Yeah. <laughs> see, see, now that's the thing. Once he starts to bleed, and I immediately go to that aspect, right, kill him. He's bleeding, he's weakened, he kills him. Uh, kill him. But from this point, it's honestly like, let's hit him and run away. Yeah. Yeah, oh. it's 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 dumb movie character stuff. It's dumb you know, movie you, logic there's no again. double tapping. No, and now <laughs> now I know what people are gonna say. Well, that'd be the movie over and done with. We're gonna kill him. But hold on a minute. If this thing is supernatural, demonic, or whatever, he'll just keep coming back. But so we I, don't know that yet. <laughs> right. So the the character like like Tara has just watched Dawn get sword in half. I don't know anybody who would not react violently to that part, to the killer in that situation. But as a slasher movie, we go with the, let's just make the girl run away. And so she does. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, well, she pays for it because she doesn't survive. <laughs> no, but this is the thing, because the, the film kind of throws a twisty on us, where they end up bringing uh, the sister, Vicky, to the to the building as well and while she's driving there you know art is chasing after uh tara and he, she comes across the exterminator mike and while he's distracted fucking art comes up behind him whacks him in the head with a hammer and knocks out well we we're supposed to be led to believe that he's dead at this point but i know that when art kills people right he really <laughs> fucks them up right pardon my french but he just wanted mike out of the way for now yeah so if so if he's only hit mike and, and mike's just taken one hit then mike's coming back man. right mike's coming back <sighs> Mm. 
Tara doesn't get off lightly. Uh, he ends up tussling with Tara some more, and uh, Tara ends up knocking him away, and Art ends up just pulling out a gun and shooting her in the leg. Is she, is she fucking at him. She I know, the right? fuck out of him, and she's like, get up, get up. I'm like, nah, you're totally dead. Right, yeah, totally, yeah, well, totally. And, yeah. and then he shoots her again in the side, in the stomach area, Yeah. and just to finish off, he shoots her in the face, but it doesn't kill her. Yeah, because he runs out of ammo. If, right, and <laughs> his look, he storms off. To go and reload his gun, and when he comes back, he's so pissed off. Yeah, you know, he just unloads the whole clip into the her whole face. Clip into her face. I, I was like, once again, movie, you've gone. We need to stand out, so we're gonna make the practical effect of all this gore look. Yeah. But it was also, I mean, it also let me know, like, he's not afraid to use firearms. Like, he's not no. knives exclusive, That's you know, it. he's whatever he wants to use. But we do also now need to bring up the cat lady, who's been wandering around this yeah. apartment, clearly Deranged. having trouble. Yeah. Because she thinks she's a tenant there, and she thinks these new people are her housemates or other tenants. And uh, she watches Tara get brutally killed, and, uh, and Art ends up catching up to her, because Art steals her porcelain doll, which... Cat lady thinks is a real baby, her yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, there's this really weird scene where she ends up coddling Art, basically yeah. saying, "Have you never felt a mother's touch? Do you know no mercy?" And he ends up suckling up to her and sucking on his thumb. And yeah, well, that's the last we see of Cat Lady. No, it's not. alive no. anyway. Well, no, she's still alive. The next time we fucking see her, well, just, just true, just, just not very long. Yeah. Because uh, Victoria has turned up again, looking looking for her sister, and she ends up finding the remains of Dawn first. Then she ends up wandering down the stairs, and she thinks she's found uh, her sister or somebody in trouble. Yeah. She calls the police or tries to, can't get a signal, and then it's revealed that the girl that she's comforting is actually Art, who has taken the hair and the chest piece of the cat, cat lady. lady and is wearing it. To trick Victoria, who of course panics and screams and runs out of the room while Art chases after her very slowly. Yeah. <laughs> she, Victoria could have, could have run out of the apartment, run out of the building, down the street and into the next postcode at this point. But she decides to hide in this, this, this room. Yeah. And he starts pointing and laughing because the, the key is dangling outside the door yeah. to give her position away. And and yeah, it's it, again. It's yeah. It's very tropey, but I like the way that he torments and plays with her, though. Yeah, I mean, it's we're not going to argue that the director has a good eye of. Oh yeah, for you the know, composition, what's put on the screen. Yeah, putting putting art in a position that it holds your attention. And as a horror watcher, seeing the girl cowering in the cupboard, seeing the killer stand there in the most fucked up garb ever, you're like, yeah, this is this stands out. But once again, it. it it builds to nothing for me, so it leads nowhere. You know, like like going back to what you said, like art using a gun was a surprise. I'd really got kind of bored seeing the same imagery of art with his fucked up mask in his outfit, walking around with a rusty knife blade. I've seen that image of a clown a million times. Seeing one standing over a girl like fucking Reservoir Dogs and unloading a gun into her face, I'm like, wow, this. This is fucking movies going. He took for that it. personally. Yeah, right? <laughs> you know that was pretty cool. But then, like I said, the the whole removal, the skinning of the breasts and and the hair. I'm like, so how evil is he? The movie still hasn't established if he's a demon or if he's just a man. So at the moment, it just looks just like fucked up actions. You know, like like if he'd taken a pack of wild dogs and gotten the dogs to rip apart a baby. Would that have been entertaining in this movie? And would we have enjoyed it? Because that's basically how he is acting with this woman. You know, taking her hair, taking her breasts, and then walking around the streets like, look at me, oh, it's, it's so good. Because, like Gary said, Vicky has had all the chance. And I understand that she's supposed to be playing a sister who's come across her, 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 her own sister and her friend's bodies that all fucked up, that she's probably in a lot of shock. But when she finally does manage to actually escape out the, the building, she I watch her go out of the building and go right back inside the building again. Yes. Instead of just running down the fucking street. Well, again, well, she pays the price for that stupidity because Art ends up getting in the exterminator's truck and plowing it right through the doors, yeah. flattening her. 
Yeah. And uh, by the time the police arrive, which is like two Art seconds later. is is knelt over her, eating her face. Yeah. Now, we should, I should rewind just slightly back as well, because uh, Victoria did also bump into Mike, who we knew wasn't dead. Yeah, yeah. And the two of them call the police and decide they're not going to stay there. They're going to leave to get to the hospital. But Mike, trying to get this door open, ends up getting uh, his uh, head flattened by, by yes. Art. Yes, yes. Uh, but it was also go back again even further because his uh, Mike's other friend, the other exterminator, turns yeah. up at one point. We see him a few points calling, texting, yelling. Yeah. And he gets in his truck and then goes, oh, well, you know, I'll try the old key under the mat. Oh, there it is. And yeah. I'm in. And only five seconds after he walks in, Art turns up, stabs him through the top of the head with a knife. Yeah. And then hacksaws his throat mm. and does. And then, yeah, fully decapitates him too. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> it's okay. just more, you know, I was I was a little bit worried at first that this film wouldn't have a high body count, but the film just kept going. Here's more characters. Yeah, Here's more just, ca we've already killed off the two leads, so we've just got art now. <laughs> and, and once, well, this is the thing. Once the police turn up and capture capture art eating fucking Vicky's face, art pulls out a gun, sticks it underneath his jaw, and blows his brains out. And you're like, oh, okay. Didn't expect that. Figured maybe a shootout. Maybe he'd even get arrested. And so that's when you obviously put together the fact that Vicky on the floor is the girl from the beginning of the movie. So for me, I'm like, well, I don't care for her because she murders the co the host, the TV host for no reason. Like, you know, are we now playing with the idea that she's connected to art, you know, and they've got this kind of connection? There's a sequel, so we'll get to that at some point. Um, but we cut to the morgue, don't we, where they brought in the bodies and the morgue attendant is stood over the uh, the body and he opens the body bag and it's Art. And Art is in a different position than what he was when the body had been picked up. His eye still gouged out though. So I was like, well, you know, he's not healing or anything. Yeah, he's not healing. And then there's a, like a weird kind of electrical disturbance. Lights start going all over the place. And that's when his hand cracks around the morgue attendant. Yeah. And we, but we do then cut to Vicky in hospital. You know, it's a year later. Time jumping's all over the fucking place in this movie. Um, and they're like, oh, you've got your TV interview tomorrow. And she's like, yes, I'm looking forward to it. And then the screen fades red and you get a flash of art. And it's like, end of the movie. And you're like, okay. <laughs> so the beginning was the end and all of the movie was before the beginning end. Yeah. yeah okay, that's yeah, fine. What? Like, I don't understand the establishment of the Vicky character unless it's going to pay off to something else. But even where they have gone with the story just seems kind of tacked on to the story that they've made. So I don't... How am I supposed to feel sympathetic to Vicky's plight after what Art has done when she has murdered when somebody? She's, in, yeah, when she's gone psycho herself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, yeah but, but, but she's not because she's just been fucking released from hospital and everyone's like, she's fine. What was she? She's not. She just murdered the fucking co-host. So, well, yeah, so she's not fine <laughs> at all. <laughs> and neither are most of the audience that watch this film either. <laughs> it's even... Uh, Vicky's character change is almost as bad not as bad but almost as bad as jamie lee curtis's fucking character change from halloween to halloween. <laughs> like she just goes from a fucking you know killer bitch to then go oh well i'm just completely different to what i am now well in going back to terrifier though yes uh do you have any favorite or if anything then memorable scenes from <laughs> the movie <laughs> um you know like i won't lie the practical effects in the movie are outstanding for what they were able to do with the money that they had. But then again, as a horror movie, as a slasher, like they also look so fake as well that I think that some of it's over the top. Like we said, the decapitation of the exterminator was a really good shot, but we have just come off the back of watching a woman get hacksawed in half. You know, maybe that should have been left to the end and the sister sees it yeah. so that we had a big climax because we we actually don't really get to a really big climax. There's a lot of chasing around. There's a lot of running around. But ultimately, the last girl doesn't run away. She just runs and hides and gets run over <laughs> yeah. and survives. Yeah. I know, I kind of appreciate that it's a little bit original in that way. Kind of, <laughs> but like, we knew that she did because we'd seen her kill the bitch at the beginning. Well, yeah, I wasn't imagining them going to do the psycho thing and, and kill off Tara halfway through the film either. 
I mean, if I did have one really, really cool favourite shot in the entire movie, I think it's the one that nobody's actually used, and I'd love to get a t-shirt of, is the shot of Art standing over Tara with the gun, you know, just before he fires. Yeah. But, like, she's, she's dying, and you feel really bad for the characters. And I, I suppose that's another thing why I don't feel that there's entertainment in watching people get tortured and murdered is because when I do generally start to feel for the character, the plight they're going through, the suffering, I want to stop. Uh, especially, like uh, like I said, especially with the Tara character because she's watched her friend get hacked up. She's taken multiple stab wounds. She's been shot a couple of times and he just unloads into her face and it explodes. And I'm like, am I supposed to be happy about that? Because I'm not. Favourite scenes? Oh, there's so many. The whole film is a favorite scene. Like from from the beginning, like the film eases you in with that interview sequence, with the makeup, with the music, with the titles, right through. Like I said, the intro of Art walking up that street with the the wind howling, the leaves cracking, the lever creaking, all of that stuff. The way the two actresses react to him, both completely different. Yeah, they've also felt really genuine, like real reactions. Like one friend would be horrified, and the other would be kind of drunk, kind of enjoying the Halloween vibes and kind of going with it. I, I just thought the intro set everything up really well. And I knew what I was in for when she dropped the line about being cut up to pieces. I was yeah. like, okay, movie, let's sh show me what you got. For me, it's, it's all the art moments, especially, especially, yeah. especially. Now, one thing that the film made me aware of as well was mm. the fact that art mimes to other people like his you know whatever his expression is whether it's happy or whether he's you know provoking a reaction from them, yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah. always doing it to somebody but that's not the case art continues to mime even if nobody's watching yeah him. he'll do it himself he mimes it's for himself funny to him. it is funny to him too and i was like so because the audience were watching him mime to nobody but himself yeah i was like it added a whole other level to it and the, the first time I really caught it was after he does the injection on Tara. Yeah. And she falls over and he's just, he just does this like pose. Yeah. I'm just like, who's he doing that for? He's just in character. It's just yeah. him. But it just made him more interesting. Yeah. Um, Art's bag of toys. Like this torture sequence where he's just like, do I use the hammer, the hacksaw, the wrench? Oh, we are going to use this. And yeah. The way he, he teases her is, is horrible. Uh, and like I said, yeah, you know, when I think it's also a, like a whole essay could be written on whether like horror comedies like this one, and I, I'm saying it is comedy because it's laugh out loud, it's yeah. cartoony and over the top, like serious movies that would handle this scene, of course you feel incredibly differently, you know, to, to how this film presents the, a similar scenario. Yeah. Um, and I think this film is, is trying to encourage you to laugh with it because... When Art is laughing, when he's hacking her in two, like, if for me, it's the way for the audience, the way the director and Art is looking to the camera going, you can laugh. We're having fun here, you know? And uh, and uh, and I, I know some people get offended and go, this is too gory and it's fine. And I, I, it made me throw up and I fainted yeah, yeah, in the yeah, cinema. Yeah. I'm just like, that's what? just clickbaity advertising. Yeah, like, just, we've heard uh, yeah. that since The Exorcist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, you know, and it's like, yeah, The Exorcist is a completely different film to this. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think it, it, pushing the boundaries of what's acceptable with the gore, uh, yeah, it, uh, it fascinated me to see uh, t what, what they can get away with today, and especially on such a low budget. So, yeah, all the gore scenes, all the art scenes it really stood out for me. There's one last scene I've got to bring up, though, and it's because it's something that Chucky does all the time, and it always gets a laugh out of me, is that yeah. after uh, Art gets the spike through his foot, yeah, yeah. and she runs away, he flips the finger to her. And I was just like, apparently that wasn't in the script. The uh, the actor just did it, and yeah. uh, everyone enjoyed it so much. They're like, that's staying in that's the film. That's staying in, yeah. <laughs> Ian, would you recommend Terrifier? I would recommend Terrifier to horror fans who have not seen it and were unwilling on watching it. I was one of those people and I will admit I've watched Terrifier 1 and 2. I've gained nothing from either of them. They've not really changed my life or made me think that was the most amazing three and a half hours I've ever spent on one horror movie. But... As a horror movie, I did enjoy it. It ticked all of those boxes. I mean, we've said it in other horror movies before. Like, 
you know, movies have to follow a certain recipe to be sort of a, a, a particular code, you know. And with horror movies, you need, uh, you know, a couple of characters alone in the dark, being chased by a killer, being killed off. You know which one of them's going to get murdered first, and you know which one of them's going to be there to the end. In this movie, it does throw a couple of curveballs. But what I also find is an issue with it, um, and this is, like I said, for people who have put off watching it is the overuse of certain things the overuse of arts iconic imagery and the overuse of the blood guts and gore i know with the first movie they were trying something new so they probably had no intention of going and doing it in a sequel but they have and i've seen the sequel and it's literally everything that they took from the first one they've just amped it up into two more hours and you think okay but once again what's the entertainment value out of it you know with certain horror movies you sit at the end and you go oh i really want to question where that character came from or what's his backstory and things like that all i hear from terrifying with the art, art the clown is oh i can't wait to see him rip apart somebody else with something new it's like i don't want that i want backstory i want to understand this character i want to know why he does it because Otherwise, I have no interest in the characters that he's attacking and so I have no interest in the story which then makes me have no interest in the violence and the gore and once again that makes me no interest in the film. We've said it millions of times with the, the Hellraiser, the Final Destination, you know, and the other horror movies. When they try to do it too much, it gets a bit boring. Terrifier 1 fit it all in this one and hopefully that's where it stays. It's not. It's not. It's going to go more, but hopefully now. Well, before I get into my recommendation, <laughs> I don't know whether you'll guess whether I'm going to recommend it or not. <laughs> let's have a brutality recap. Right, okay. First up, we have the eye gouging, followed by a decapitation. We get some fingers cut off. We get stabbed in the face. Lots. Lots. Uh, some facial mutilation. A leg stabbing. A bloody injection. We get sawed in half. We get gunshots to the leg, gunshots to the stomach, and to the face. And more shots to the face. We get a hammer to the head, knife to the head, decapitation, suffocation, head stomped, whip slashed, and a strangulation to finish it off. And that's not including all the damage that is inflicted upon Art the Clown either. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm definitely recommending terrifier and i highly recommend it to those with a taste for horror especially brutal creepy and disgusting kinds of horror this is an ultra low budget but it shows an incredible wealth of talent in filmmaking special effects and gore which on its own is fine but matched with david howard thornton's performances art the clown you have a potential new icon within the slasher genre the uber slasher more violent more bloody and shocking than most mainstream horror slashers and it's completely uncensored unfiltered and disgusting and also hilariously funny and over the top it's really impressive very realistic gore but it's also cartoony it really strikes the fine balance of horror and comedy for me it hits the right notes and it remains creepy when it needs to be the film has little to offer in the story department, no explanation, no reason, and very little character development. <laughs> but Art the Clown remains interesting and retains some mystique about what art actually is. Sound effects were decent, good use of the location, great lighting and makeup, decent soundtrack and editing, and you wouldn't believe it was actually made on such a low budget of $35,000. All in all, the film is totally average but the art character and with some good direction it massively elevates this right into iconic territory and i'd be fairly happy i'd be dead happy with a terrifier trilogy <laughs> thanks for watching off the shelf reviews